What is going on YouTube Nation? This is Dark Dividend. If you guys are new to my YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. So I have two real estate investment trusts for you guys to check out. Uh, they're both high yield uh, real estate investment trusts and they're both less than $10. And they're starting to grow in revenue and dividends. So we always like dividend hikes. That's always a good thing. And one of them I found, I'm like, where the hell did you come from? It's, it's like, you know, an underground dividend stock that's really hot and uh, it's cheap and it's revenues jumping up like crazy. So I'll do a stock analysis and dividend stock analysis on them. I'll also do a review on uh, these dividend stocks. These mortgage, uh, one of them is actually a mortgage backed real estate investment trust that I own and I'm long on. And another one is a real estate investment trust. So again, Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss future videos. Smash that like button. Let's check these stocks out right now. And the first stock I want to discuss is actually a mortgage-backed real estate investment trust. Uh, symbol is SACH. It's Stakem Capital Corp. Uh, the market cap is $168.34 million U.S. million. The volume is 245.90K. P.E. ratio is 10.88. The dividend yield is 10.13%. Its year range is 440 to 655. Its day range is 466 to 478. And its previous close was 468. So why do I own these guys and why am I long in them? Let's check this out. The first, Sacum Capital is a Connecticut-based real estate finance company that specializes in originating, servicing, and managing a portfolio of first mortgage loans. So right there, it's a mortgage-backed real estate investment trust. So how are they doing revenue-wise and how are they doing uh, dividend-wise? And I have done some videos on these guys, but these guys are so attractive. I need to start buying the dip and I need to load up on uh, this dividend stock. And I can tell you I am long in this one. And again, this is not financial advice for entertainment purposes. Only disclaimer in the description, but I love this stock. And let's go over the revenue and the dividend history. And financially, these guys are way underrated. And this is one that most people don't know about is a dividend stock. Look at this revenue. This is in millions of US dollars. 2.787 2015. 2016, 4.134. 4 2017, 6.997. 2018, 11.71. 2019, 12.68. 2020, 18.60. And 2021, 30.42 so look at that increase in revenue in millions of us dollars these guys is a mortgage-backed real estate investment trust some of them are yield traps like i discussed with nly stock and why i believe agnc is a uh, yield trap because they have decreased their dividends over time these guys as i will go over their dividend uh, history these guys are increasing their revenue and they're not stagnant like some of the other mortgage-backed real estate investment trusts so you know, when they're stagnant, that becomes, you know, you're not going to really see dividend hikes. And again, 90% of um, real estate investment trust, whatever you own, remember, goes back to investors. So you need to see an increase in revenue that makes these guys very attractive. And I'll go over their dividend history. So right here in 2017, and again, this is less than $5. It was it hit five cents, then 2017 it hit 10 cents, then 2018 it hit 11 cents, 12 cents, 17, then went back to 12. So the revenue is increasing. They're sitting at 474. Has a PE ratio of 10.7, annual dividend of 48 cents, dividend yield of 9.96 percent. The thing I like about these guys and why I own them, um, you know, again, this is no guarantees, but the dividend hikes. Um, they could be coming. And this is why I buy these guys. I mean, it went from, it has rebounded over time. Now that 17 cents, you know, that looked like that was just a one-time thing, but it's at 12 cents and their revenue is increased. And these guys are a very underground dividend stock. And this is why I loaded up on these guys. I see a lot of potential in them with their um, revenue increasing and their price per share. So that's one thing that I like about these guys. I'm going to try to get to maybe 100 shares and see what happens. But this is one that you guys should check out. Just keep on your radar. And let's jump to the next dividend stock. This one's really interesting. I like this one a lot. So let's check this out. I like this one a lot. I had to do a lot of digging to see if these guys are for real. Necessity retail rate class A. I had to like slow down when I was saying and I had to redo that because it's like a tongue twister sitting at 751 its previous close was 731 its day range was 728 to 752 year range is 683 to 1021 the market cap is 972.19 million US dollars the volume is 719.07 K 
now look at this pandemic hit you could see they're kind of a, a REIT that's new a new kid on the block it's just bad timing i mean look at this they were doing decent and then the pandemic hit all the way to 498 and they just really haven't rebounded very strongly and that's kind of a given if you're a real estate investment trust and you're not as big but there's they're starting to make a big comeback and let's check these guys out well, check this out our necessity and traditional retail single tenant property portfolio reflects trusted brands and features the type of businesses america's consumers continue to visit regularly including quick service and fast casual restaurants auto repair and services facilities car washes gas and convenience stores dollar stores retail branches pharmacies and home improvement stores our geographically diverse single tenant portfolio features long-term net leases embedded in rental income growth with primarily investment grade uh, rated tenants so here's just some of their um, real estate investment trust information but this is what i like so their um Retail, 81%, industrial, um, 17%, and then office is like 2%, and then traditional, and then necessity-based, 79% versus traditional, 21 And this is a lot of the companies that they have. So long-term single-tenant assets that are 95% occupied with a 10-year remaining lease term complement the multi-tenant portfolio. So here's some of them. DeVita, Kinding Hair, Advanced Auto Parts, Dollar General, Pizza Hut, Tractor Supply, Chevron, Fresenius Medical Care. So, so those are the uh, Fresenius and those guys, those are dialysis companies. And I'm going to tell you right now, um, people are getting sicker and there's a rise in diabetes. And I can tell you being a nurse on a cardiac step down floor, there's a lot of patients that need to have permacasts right up here and, uh, start getting drained for dialysis because their kidneys aren't doing very well. And usually when people have CHF, they have diabetes and diabetes is frying the kidneys and people are not very compliant with their medications and hypertensive medications. And they come in with a rebound hypertensive crisis for not taking medications like clonidine and boom they need a permacath in them which eventually leads to a fistula most of the time you know i cross my fingers i hope these people get wake-up calls but um, your kidneys go and you need dialysis and we call dialysis machines a vampire machines because it pretty much um, cleans out your blood so that's one thing, the geographic distribution across 47 states in the District of Columbia with select concentrations and growing markets with strong demographics. So you're seeing their portfolio. And I'm going to go over just a few more things. They have power centers. So they have 56 power centers. They have anchored centers, 35 centers. And they have grocery centers, 21 uh, numbers of centers. So you can see the occupancy rate is high. I would say that's pretty high. And they're just, I mean, again, these guys hit the pandemic and it's just being unlucky. They're, they have a strong portfolio and um, I got to show you their revenue. This is insane. And holy cow, check this out. Look at their revenue. This is 2015, 174, 2016, 177, then um, 2017, 270, then 2018, 291, then 2019, 299, 2020, 305, 2021, 335. So you're seeing a huge increase in revenue. This is why I was excited to show you guys this stock that really is kind of a, um, a new kid on the block and it's very underrated and underground, uh, dividend stock slash real estate investment trust. Now, I had to do a lot of digging because these guys are a new um, kid on the block and I had to go on numerous websites to study their dividend history. Check this out. So you can tell starting in 2018, just studying the trends, three cents, then nine cents, then two cents. They're trying to get their feet up. Nine cents, three cents, nine cents. Then they hit 10 cents. They're slowly trying to get there. Nine cents, 25, and they hit 20 cents, and then four four cents they're they're just trying but then all of a sudden 2020 hits seven cents and they're at 21 cents so the payout ratio is a big problem i just want to say this uh the dividend growth is 9.16 percent the dividend yield is 11.42 percent the payout frequency is quarterly the annual dividend is 85 cents so 
right here, be careful of the payout ratio. This is why I'm still going to study it. I'm not going to pull the trigger on it completely, but it's cheap, really cheap. The revenue is going up. That's one thing that's really attractive. Um, RTL has a dividend yield of, of 11.42% and paid 85%, uh, I'm sorry, 85 cents per share the past year. The dividend is paid every three months and the last X dividend date was April 8th, 2022. So this is one thing just to keep an eye on. These guys are um, pretty attractive right now. And... Um, I'll go over the financials. I know I went over revenue trends, but this is important. So here's the revenue. I went over that because I want to be a little bit in detail with this because th this is one, it's you just got to be careful. So the revenue growth is 9.81%. That's great. Cost of revenue, 55.43. Gross profit, 279. That's gone up a lot. That's good. Selling general and admin, 20.86. Operating income is 78.72. Um, interest expense, 81.78. Pre-tax income, negative 40.18. Net income, just keep an eye on that, 40.18 in the negative. Net income common, 63.44. So the shares change, 6.46. The shares of outstanding, 115. The diluted shares 115, dividend per share is 85. The dividend growth is up 21.43%. Uh, profit margin minus 11.99%. I this is why I went into detail about this one. Operating margin 23.49%. Gross margin 83.46. Free cash flow margin negative 15.02. So you're seeing it in the negative. It's way better than before so i mean gosh it was 2013 it was way back <laughs> it was way down but it's getting better so that's one thing so there could be a dividend cut i'm just saying just keep an eye on these guys they're less than ten dollars um sacum capital group i wanted to show you just the increase in revenue these guys are starting to get up there they're starting to get up there um it, is it a risk absolutely in both of these two um, but these are less than ten dollars, and um, you know the risk. There's sometimes we take a risk in investing. Um, could I throw two hundred, three hundred in it? Yes, and then see what happens. Um, it's just it's very attractive with their growth, and it's one just to keep an eye on. So let me know what you think of this video with these two dividend stocks. Um, very, very attractive RTL is just because I, from what I'm seeing, just with the trends and stuff, it, it was, uh, I, I really wanted to go into detail on this one because there are signs of improvement. Um, there is an increase in revenue and I think these guys can really do some damage in the long run again this is not financial advice for entertainment purposes only disclaimer in the description you guys let me know what you think um Sacum, i have those guys i'm long in them rtl very closely studying and um i i may pull the trigger on them don't quote me on that but i just like the way i mean the statements you know there's um right over here the annual and quarterly that, but the revenue growth is looking really strong. I mean, look at 2017, the revenue growth is going up. So things are looking pretty strong with these guys. So you guys, um, let me, tomorrow I'm going to post one on dividend stocks, but I really wanted to touch some REITs that are pretty cheap right now for you guys to keep an eye on and uh, put on your radar just to keep a close eye on. So... Do you like RTL? Do you like Sacum? I, I like Sacum. I'm going to hold on to them. I like their uh, increase in uh, revenue. But do you own any of these two? And do you think they're yield traps? Let me know in the comments section. Do you guys take care and have a good one.